Howdy folks, this is uh, King Rune. King Rune 3D printers have been around for a while, but this is the new, 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 new one, the KPS3 Pro S1, I think they have the, uh, I'll, I'll make sure I get that name right. <laughs> this is their new upgraded model, and it seems to offer some really cool features, and again, at a great price, which is a good reason to look at it, especially if it's, if it's gonna be your very first printer, this would be a good way to go, you know, low maintenance. Hey, you know, we're gonna open the box and we're gonna get into this one, yeah. So here it is, we're gonna get the box open. The, this one here is uh, like industrial grade. Uh, they're great for print farms, that kind of thing, but also if you're you know, getting in your first printer because it's a low price. It's a low consumer price for the features that it has. And we're gonna to try to cover all that today because King Rune, we have one in here and it runs part of our 3D printing operation for our 3D printing farm. And I was really impressed with the fact that the really what really threw me was that the linear, the linear rails on this thing are amazing because they it just requires no maintenance. And once you get it set up and you've got your bed level, it seems like the printer just runs and runs and runs, you know. So I think it's a pretty good product. Now this one's a, an upgrade. This is a jump from what we have. So, okay, comes with the usual manual. I'm gonna get you over here to see how this baby was packed. It is, it's nicely packed. Oh, yeah. Now that I've got the box open, we can get this, uh, get this foam out of the way. There isn't a lot to assemble with this either. There's just the two pieces really. There's the top with the cantilever and also of course the bottom piece. Uh, from what I understand, the build plate is, I believe, larger than the other machine we have. Also comes with all the usual goodies. So we're going to get this unpacked, take a look at what we got in the box here. I'll lay it all out. We can have a quick look, and then we got to get it together. And heck, we're going to print a project today, man. Oh yeah. Okay, real quick. Uh, here's the basic, you know, the body of the machine with the new build plate on it. This is an upgraded build plate from the old uh, one. So just. Keeping track of things here. Uh, the Z rod is not installed, obviously, because we got to put this on top here and have that Z rod installed, which will go right in here. Here, so here's the new Z rod, which they include. Here's the top. The top will bolt to the to the uh, base, and you've got a power cord, and you've got these little rails with the little wheels on them for feeding your uh, rolls of filament into the machine. And then you have a nice box of spare parts, which includes tools and some extra uh, nozzles, a little bit of everything in there. But it's it's a nice spare parts toolkit to keep and this is sort of like I said makes sort of a nice industrial machine let's get her assembled yeah boom there it is assembled this is only a couple minutes later uh, put the z-rod in first and thread it up through this piece and then brought it up to where the bearing is now slid this down into a square hole that's back here put a couple bolts in there and also put the Bowden tube on. That was it. Basically, we're up and ready to go. I've selected some green uh, PLA plus for project. And I guess we'll, let's make the Benchy real quick because I want to do some interesting projects with this one. I want to show you something here. So we'll do the Benchy first just to check everything out. I got to level the bed yet. So that'll be the next thing. Yeah, please stay tuned for a minute after this. Uh, I'm going to show you how to get this bed leveled correctly because uh, this is the second one came in and it is the same problem. So I'll show you how to get over it. It's not a not the end of the world, not a big deal, but it's just something you're going to have to do to level the bed. Uh, meantime, yes, the King Rune KP3S Pro S1 is a cantilever style, as you can see, uh, 3D printer with linear guard ra guide rails. The linear rails are right here, and of course, the linear rail there. So it runs on bearings instead of the rubber wheels that most of them come with. And so it's on the X, the Y, and the Z axis, which really gives the printer head a lot of stability and accuracy for, you know, really increasing your print quality. The uh, Pro is currently the most cost effective among similar products on the market. It just is, you know. Uh, based on the Titan Direct Drive Extruder with a 3 to 1 gear ratio, the KP Pro is a capable to print various 3D printing materials, including the common PLA, of course, but also the TPU and the PET-G. So there's your three uh, types of materials that you can print with this particular printer. Yes, it, you know, it, it can do even the, and the TPU is that soft rubber stuff, so that has always been a headache with me on certain printers. This one here can handle it, so that's a good thing. The uh, print volume is 200 by 200 by 200 millimeter, or eight and a quarter uh, US by eight and a quarter US by eight and a quarter US. You get what I'm saying. 
and you know there's a great amount of very little you know foot space here taken up it has a very small footprint on the bench so that's really a good thing uh, switching power supply on and off right here with your cable it has touch screen right here for all your activity on the machine so again you know it's a nice little touch screen it's kind of basic at the same time it's like it's really cool compared to some of the uh, more expensive printers that I've had in here. So it actually has a nice uh, touch screen and it has a, uh, it operates safer and more, uh, uh, more convenient to be placed when compared to other 3D printers, which is true. You don't have to reach around the back or something. You just simply switch on and switch off at the front. So there's a couple of things. I will be providing a link, of course, in the description below and some hashtags and what have you to uh, show some highlights about this particular machine. But believe me, stay tuned. I'm going to show you the big secret uh, of how to fix the bed leveling issue on all of these printers because we've had this before and this one came in. It was a classic. It was exactly the same problem. So, um, yeah, let me get into that. Yeah. One of the uh, cooler projects that you can run on a machine like this, too, is this little clamp is really cool. You can get this off Thingiverse for a file and it even comes with a little cap that just snaps on. I did one in green and did you know, obviously one in blue. And also I did two different bodies. This one here is the shorter, but I would actually go with the longer one. There's no reason to build the shorter one. I thought maybe for some reason uh, we would do both sizes and green and blue, but th these are cool little clamps. What surprises me is how nice the thread works on this. It just absolutely, it's, it's, a, it's a perfect thread. And it sort of tells you, you know, the machine's doing a nice job. The other thing I did, of course, was the Benchy, the usual Benchy. And the Benchy was absolutely, you know, pretty much flawless. There's really a, there's a few lines that are a little bit, just a tiny bit high, but really for the, you know, for this particular printer, it's actually amazing. In fact, the print came up really good on the back and on the back here, which again is kind of outstanding because I've had printers that have had Benchies come off a lot worse than this. This one has got no overhangs, no stringy. The Benchy looks great, and it sort of proves the machine is doing a really terrific job. Uh, this was the first print I made. Unfortunately, this was just a mistake, but uh, at the same time, uh, you can look at the, 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 you know, the lettering in here and the depth of the lettering and the slot here and the little stairwell that's up inside the uh, rook, the castle here, and it is amazing how accurate and how perfect this thing is. It's just, it's just and this came off this machine right here in front of you, so... It does a nice job. I do like these little machines. Uh, I like the price because they are around $200, which is really, you know, to get into a 3D printer is not bad. But what throws me off is these linear rails because they're kind of like an industrial quality that will make this machine run for very, very, very long periods of time with very little wear and tear on these. So that part's really good. Now, I've got a tip here to show you. Anybody getting a king room, this is something you need to look out for, and it's kind of a common problem. Uh, when these are shipped, there's a soft plate under here, and the plate holds these adjustments here. That plate, a lot of times, gets bent down a little bit from shipping and packaging. It's just, you know, it's like, it's kind of like, it's, it's, it's a shame, but it happens. And so what I've done here, and I'll have to, you know, prop the machine up a little bit for you right here so you can see it. I took it apart and straightened the plate, this black plate right here underneath. I'll bring it forward here so you can really get a good look at it. This, this plate right here was bent. All four tabs were down. And what happens with that is your stop limit will no longer set properly for when you start setting up your leveling your bed. You won't even have a, you won't even be able to reach the bed with the nozzle. It's, it's that bad. So I straightened these up and then I put quarter 20 little nuts spacers under these uh, springs right here. And that helps to bring the bed up stiffer, which I prefer because I really don't want the bed, you know, floating around on springs anyways. I kind of want it on the stiff side, but also it uh, increases the height a little bit, gives you a little bit more height adjustment up the top here because you don't want to mess with this. Let me turn the machine a little bit. There's a little stop limit right here. This screw is fairly tight. Just make sure it's snug, but don't try to tighten down. I've seen people break these off, and there's no reason for it because this stop limit right here, this is where you want this to stop because you're running out of thread and all the rest of it on the machine. So obviously, this is a good place to be. But if you can't get your nozzle all the way down to the bed, then the secret 
is simple. You know, put make sure these, this plate is nice and straight, or even bend it back straight if you have to, and put your quarter inch 20 nuts in there for spacers, and you won't have the problems that uh, other people were uh, breaking these machines. I actually watched a YouTube video, and the guy, <coughs> he tore it up pretty good. The next big uh, tip on this one, when you're setting up, this is textured glass, which is different from the old PEI sheet that used to come with the King Room. And I like the uh, textured glass. I don't use glue. I've seen people using glue. With textured glass, I had to fight to get these pieces off even this morning after this machine has sat overnight. So yeah, it, it sticks fine without, without the glue. <laughs> Uh, this particular clip right here, put it at the front. Do not put it along the side here. And the same with this one back here. Put it at the back where you see I've got mine. Also the other ones here, the other ones here. These four help to, you know, they just help to hold this glass in place for you while you're printing. But the reason is this one here, I've actually seen this where it'll actually catch here if you don't have it quite on just snug and there's no reason to have it you can have it on this side here you don't need it this one here the nozzle travels through here so obviously you don't want it there so don't do that uh, I have seen some YouTube reviewers put them on the side and then you know have the collision with the uh, nozzle so that's another little tip you got it from here <laughs> yeah the King Rune I really like this little machine a couple of reasons price of course and the durability of these linear rails just makes this thing it's sort of like it's in its own little place, you know, and it's a good machine for even a print farm. If you're setting up a print farm and you want a lot of machines for very little money that are going to be very dependable, uh, this is one way to go. I have seen these in print farms where the fella has up over 100, and, I think it was 150 of these things set up. Another print farm was looking at uh, that a fella had going, he had a hundred of these machines. And the reason they have them is because they are, well, all, I'm going to say almost indestructible. Once you get them set up, they just run, you know. Uh, the plate size is decent for what it is. And again, at, at a, around that $200 mark, you can't really get much more, you know, durable machine for that price. And I guess that's the whole point of the King Rune is that they are just with these linear rails this thing will just run and run and run you know and and that's the sort of thing that like a printer farm wants to look for as a machine that can long run long hours long weeks weeks after weeks maybe even years with very little uh, maintenance and that's where these linear rails really shine you know but the uh, $200 investment per machine, something like that, they're great. But also, if you're getting your first machine, this is a good machine to learn on. And the reason I say that, it doesn't have auto bed leveling. So, and I kind of like that because auto bed leveling can be, uh, it's a lot of headache, I tell you the truth, I really don't like it. But I like the fact that once I set this up and I get my bed leveled, my bed has been, I leveled my other King Room over a year ago. And to this day, it has never needed to be adjusted a second time even. After that, it's you can just you know put the file in and walk away. Speaking of put the file in, yeah, the software. Uh, it will work with Ultima Cura. It'll also work with uh, Prusa Slicer. Apparently, you can use that too. For slicing software, I like the Ultima Cura. Just run with it. I, I don't really have any uh, particular favorites on that. Uh, everything's loaded on a TF card here, and then just put in the side which uh, is a micro card. I wish they would go with a full size SD card, but almost nobody seems to like to have that for some reason. They really are crazy for these TF cards. You also have a Cat5 or 6 uh, cable connect over here, so you can get to a uh, laptop or something if you wanted, if you, if you needed to do that for some reason, or put a remote or something on here. The uh, machine does not come with a LADAR or any of the fancy gobbledygook stuff. It's very basic that way. And I, again, I like that because it just means I've got what I want. I don't have Wi-Fi connect or anything going on here. It's just a nice, simple 3D printing machine. It'll just you know, put the file in, select the file, tell it to print, and it just does its thing. A uh, couple of weird things that is different with this particular one is this little bottom tube up here. You can actually sort of pull this out of here and it helps you to, if you need to extract the uh, filament and change it say to another color, something like that. And because it's direct drive, I like that. That's a, that is really a cool, it's a very Titan-like uh, situation. If they were gonna make an improvement, I would say change this over to an all metal uh, hot end. That would be really cool, but that's, you know, again, that would up the price of the machine. What you're paying for right here is really 
still a really good value because of those rails and it has all the basic needs of doing PLA. Uh, I've got PLA Plus on here, of course, uh, PET G and TPU. Those are your really your three basic starter, you know, kind of filaments that you're going to run with. This here, uh, as far as the feed thing goes, I'm not real fussy on it. Uh, I have not seen anybody real happy with it, but it does the, it does work. It does the trick. So it's like, you know, can't really say too much about it. It feeds underneath though. And that can be a problem if you have uh, a dryer box that feeds from the top, then it's harder to deal with this. And what some people will do is jump out the switch here and then just feed from the top on the bottom tube, something like that. I've, I've seen that done. It's just, it is what it is. <clears throat> this is still great machine for, for great value. So yeah, the King Rune. KPS3 Pro S1. That's this particular model right here. Because of the low dollar, it, it hits a quite a few different areas. It, it, the students, you know, back to school, it, there'll be some specials coming up mid-August but also, uh, you know, print farming. So it's like, it hits a lot of different areas. And I think also as a beginner machine for someone who wants to learn 3D printing, it's about one of the lowest, in, you know, inexpensive investments to get into is this one here for 3D printing. So you can start to learn how to do 3D printing and how to deal with it. Other points for this particular printer is it's very quiet when it's running. And also it doesn't take a lot of power compared to uh, some 3D printers out there. A lot of the 3D printers take more power than this guy. Yeah. I want to thank the Z Vanix for sending this over to us so we can take a look at it today and review it. The link will be provided, like I said, in the description below. And I invite you to go take a look at the link, take a look at that price. This is a solid little machine. I really like this little guy. <laughs> the King Runes. They do, they seem to have some interesting printers and this one here, like I say, I, to me, this is print farm material, but it's also a great beginning machine and it's a low price. I mean, it's just a combination of interesting, uh, very interesting things. It's, it's probably the most unusual printer that we have on the market right now, just because of what it represents. So thank you so much for watching Coffee and Tools. Please like, share, subscribe, and ring the notice bell. We give away stuff on the show all the time, so you don't want to miss on that. So meantime, I'm out of here. Uh, over and out.